Here, here we are. <laughs> this is three black fems. This is three black fems. Um, I'm Rhythm Keen. We need supervision. We all need supervision. <laughs> clearly, I'm, I'm Tara the Creo. I am the princess of well, kinda. <laughs> yeah. <Or Miriam. laughs> and here we are. Yeah, we do require supervision. Here um, we go. <laughs> as, as here Mark we are. Walks back in Mark the comes room. back to get us we together. <laughs> We're the adults. Dad. Dad, come back. Oh, it's so good to say that. Oh I've never God. said that before. That was wholesome in ways I didn't realize I did. I, you know, I realized I've never said dad, but like just like the first syllable of that, like it's always been, never mind, never mind. In like a larger it's, expletive? No, I've always just oh. said daddy and like, but not oh. in that context, obviously. Yeah, yeah. I have a friend who has a friend who I'm just going to assume that that's. This story sounds made up. I'm going to say, which is a you. It is a friend who's a friend, but I think think that the friendships are like far enough out that the person will probably never hear this and never know that the person told me this story. (laughs) Okay, good. good, Fingers crossed. But the, so the friend who told the story, their friend has talked about how they had never used daddy in that way. Mm -hmm. And so they were determined, like their assignment walking away from this conversation was to use it. (laughs) Oh. What, what they ended up saying in the moment instead was dad. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, no! dad. Fuck dad. Like, oh, dad. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> like my favorite story ever and I wasn't involved in any way. Like I don't even know the person that it's about. Which is again why I hope they're not listening. <laughs> So this is a this is a really corny joke that one of my friends um, told, and this particular friend will know it's about her when she listens to it. She's literally the only person with the intersections to make up this joke. And like, if I'm wrong for retelling it, definitely drag me, block me, uh, send me a request on Cash App. Like I don't know um, yes. the process, but <laughs> yeah. So my friend um, who is a queer Muslim woman, she was like, because um, the word antifada I think means like uprising yes. or like rebellion and she was like i need me a radical muslim bay so he can be my anti-fada <laughs> <laughs> and i was like i'm blocking you on all social media networks <laughs> blocking you in life <laughs> we are no longer friends except please be my friend forever <laughs> oh my god <laughs> mm-hmm. okay as this, i write down radical this, muslim bay yes mm. This, You're this, Harambe, if you will. Yeah. Like you said, like Harambe. I miss Harambe. Hold on. Just take a note about missing Harambe. Contact Harambe. <laughs> I love that I didn't know that you weren't talking about a gorilla until maybe like weeks into the <laughs> year. I was like, oh, yeah, Daryl cares, cares one, uh, calls one of his uh, little boys, uh, little boy toys, Harambe. And that's so interesting. He is a gorilla. He, he, he beats my chest. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, Mbako. <laughs> Let's talk about Mbaku. <laughs> Go. We have to save it for this topic. Uh, mm-hmm. Back shots. This nonsense <laughs> is fueled by <laughs> ramen coffee. Yes. Our drink of the day. I finished it's whiskey mine. and coffee, isn't it? Oh, it, it is, is whiskey, whiskey and, and coffee. coffee. But we were talking about rum. We were talking about rum, but we're drinking whiskey. Mm. Straight up whiskey. Like an Alabama Negro. Yes. How my grandmother described my drinking habits. She told me I drink like an Alabama Negro at the Thanksgiving table. <laughs> Thanks, Grandma. I've never had an Alabama Negro. 215 360. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I want one mm. of them. Never mind. I was like, we're problematic. I was like, so I problematic. I want some. The system has failed you. <laughs> so l- listen, listen. I feel like when I offered my desire. Of what I wanted in a black person talk or a black what, man. Talk about what it was, though. I'm, no, because we don't need to know all that. We do. Um, <laughs> the people need to answer. hear it. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say we that all y'all is anti-black. We didn't support you in that yeah, moment. I just, I just want, like, you know, you keep trying, but you just can't get right, dick. You know, like, like, like I want... Um, I can't breathe. Like, like <laughs> Ralph Angel uh, from uh, Queen Sugar. Ralph Angel... <laughs> I'm triggered. <laughs> Ralph Angel upsets me so much. I want so much for him. Because I don't feel like it's... A... Ralph Angel <laughs> is the epitome of, like, can't get right. However, for real. it's not... It's not... It's usually not, like, systemic. Like, some of it is, but some of it is just Ralph Angel. And the thing is, even the parts of it that are just, like... Because typically with, like... Because I, I know some can't get right-ass black men. Like, I typically it 
it's in some ways systemic but it's like just super hyper internalized whether from like Mm -hmm. upbringing or Mm -hmm. like trauma like at a certain point we do have to take responsibility responsibilities for ourselves but like trauma really Says the tourist, no, we don't. No, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> Who's responsible? Who? Yes, exactly. We have to do what? Well. Uh, we, we don't know her. Safe words. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. This, Sometimes you have to take responsibility. It might. To. It might be. It might be systemic in some ways. Um, I don't know how we got all in this woke shit. I was just saying that I would like a Kofi Sorobo. I just. I want M'Baku. Yes, Beat M'Baku. My own back. Blow my own back out. <laughs> mm, I can't with either. <laughs> <laughs> When All he right. barked. I'm sorry. Okay, let's go. Let's that, get to our black joys. Yes. Oh, yeah. Because y'all just cannot wait. So, no. <laughs> can't wait. so y'all know what this episode is hitting. Just get to the black joy. Can't wait. Um, having said that, I have not thought at all about my black joy. <laughs> no dead ass me either. I, like, oh. I can start them. Give Please you time. do. Yes. Okay. I have actually competing black joys, so I'm going to offer them both because yes. I feel joyful. Mm-hmm. Um. I think the first is I went to take my uh, cadre of nephews and nieces all to see Black Panther. Yes. And when I tell you it was, um, first off, I don't know why I didn't think about this on the front end. Don't know why. But I think I was having like a bad day one day and I was like, what could I do to improve my mood? And I was like, let me take these nigglets to see Black mm-hmm. Panther. Yes. How many of them are there? It's five of them. Yes. Um, well, technically there's six, but the, the I have a rule where like I don't take pre-verbal children because mm-hmm. um, I don't I don't like guessing games. I don't like any of that nonsense. It's probably why I'm single. So, <laughs> I, um, but it was the ones that were verbal. And so um, the one thing with my nephews and nieces is that they all know that I am a pushover um, and that I love to spoil them. I believe in spoiled black kids. Yeah. Um, um, and so we went, we, so when we, um, when they, when my sister showed up with my nephews and nieces, their one instruction to me was, was don't let them get whatever they want. And they said it, they said it like through tight lips. And so they, of course I gave them whatever the fuck they wanted. <laughs> we got to this theater, um, and literally we got to this theater and we are, they're standing around me. I was like, get away from me. I was like, go pick out snacks. And so literally they march up and they are grabbing everything, Aww. everything. So we spent, I feel like. Luckily, it wasn't that much. We spent like $70 for snacks. Um, and then afterwards, we went to get dinner. And then we talked about the movie. It was just beautiful. Aww. So that's my first. And the other one is, um, I think maybe a week or two ago, I wrote a post about Kip West Philly. Mm, that's um, and I um, that. it's, it's a post. It's a beautiful post. And apparently... Of course, this was what it actually was designed to do as well. Um, it went viral and it got to Kip West Philly. Um, oh, wow. I didn't yeah. know that part. It got to the like regional office. It got to um, it trickled to schools and things like that. And so my friend who inspired the post got called to the office. Um, and to be fair, on the front end, I told him, I was like, I'm, I want to post this. But I gave, I gave him like... Like, like, like the here's what could happen? Yeah. And I was like, I want to post this, but I know this is not my reality. So... I'm not going to post this until you give me the approval. Mm -hmm. It's like, fuck them niggas. I was like, okay, I posted it. Approval. Um, Yeah. And so I think in the aftermath of it going viral, um, without like, without identifying my friend, like change is happening. Yeah. And it was really Mm. beautiful to, to see such a response so quickly. And I think it actually says a lot about how these institutions are fragile. And so they, the sniff of like the bad kind of yes. thing happening with the right words mm-hmm. scares the fuck out of them. Mm-hmm. But thank God they're scared because they are thinking about their practices. And I think already one of the practices that I outlined in the letter has already been eliminated. So I'm like, this is good. That's beautiful. beautiful. It is. That's I don't it. Know how I missed that. I need to go back and read it. Yeah, I definitely caught that. And I just like read the whole thread mm-hmm. and didn't insert any kind of like opinions. I just want to say, no, like, Okay, where are parents coming from? Where are mm, teachers coming mm, from? Like mm. I, I read every comment on that John and I didn't say a fucking thing. And I was like, I'm gonna save my energy and my thoughts because like I don't even know if I'm right about schools and I work in one, so I'm shut the fuck up. That's, that's real. <laughs> that says everything though. Um, I had so much stronger opinions about education and like educational practices before I began teaching. Like, but that says everything. And now I'm just like, whatever gets me through the day, <laughs> and that's where I think a lot of like. What we don't understand is like we we come with these like you know large ideas because mm-hmm. I'm a large idea person mm-hmm. and like these oh well you should do this because kids this and kids mm-hmm. that and like here's how we like you know this for kids but dead ass mm-hmm. people who are in the trenches like teachers are just trying to get to the end of Hell the yeah. day right. nine times out of it's ten it's trauma like it's, it's trauma and I don't think I realized that like I'm 
and I don't want to admit this because like Aries, I never want to admit <laughs> defeat. I am traumatized by my job. Mm-hmm. Like I came mm-hmm. home on Friday and I just realized like how much I like wanted to barricade myself in my room and like not talk to anyone. And, and I'm just like, oh, because I'm tired. Like, no, like this is a this is what I'm having is a trauma response. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like eh, more to unpack later. <laughs> Mm. I want some um, thank God for teachers. I, I once had a non teaching role at mm-hmm. an alternative school and I felt very traumatized by like it, and people would say like because, you know, these were kids who had been kicked out of public school. And so people would be like, oh, isn't it terrible we're working with these bad kids? And I'm like, the kids are the least of my issues. Yes. Yeah. The yes. very least, yes. like the kids, like kids are awful people, but like they're still kids. Yeah. 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 So I'm like the little bit of joy yeah, that I got awful. from that job was from the kids. I was mm-hmm. like, it was everything else that was so awful. And my partner at the time was like, like kept trying to get me to quit the job. And finally I asked why, cause why would I have asked that initially? <laughs> um, and he was like, cause it has such an effect on you because you care. Yes. He's yeah. like, you care too much. Yes. Yeah, yes. he's like the only person who's gonna like get by at that job is care. somebody who doesn't care. And at the time, I was just like, "Whatever, you're dumb. You don't understand things." And then years later, I was mm-hmm. like, "Oh, mm-hmm. 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 that was rough." Fam, I woke up on Friday, five a.m. and goddamn color corrected and and concealed the bags under my eyes because typically I'm fine walking out the house looking like whatever happened happened. <laughs> but I don't think I have looked this much raccoonish. <laughs> Like I looked, whew, I looked like who shot John. I knew you were gonna say that. I love black people because that's exactly what I said in my head. Like you look like who shot John? I did. I looked like who shot John? It was a mess. I would love to know the origins of who shot John. <laughs> who was the first person to utter who shot John? And who actually shot John? Who right. did shoot John? The real question is who shot John and why is it associated with looking ugly? Like, <laughs> was was the nigga that shot John just real ugly? Maybe. Yo, that was it was a nigga named Marcus who shot John. It was. He was probably light skinned. No, sorry. <laughs> he was hideous though. I just know he was. And like niggas don't know his like niggas don't know anything about him. They don't know what, what where he came from. They didn't even take the time to solve why he shot John. <laughs> no, nope. They just They were just like, that's an like. ugly ass <laughs> Remember that nigga who shot John? I mean, rest in <laughs> peace, John, but that nigga <laughs> ugly. Like, hmm. A class nigga. That makes me think of, who like... Who shot John ass looking ass nigga? <laughs> that, that makes me like think of being, John. like, almost 15 years removed from my HBCU experience. And the number of times I'll reach for somebody's name and realize I never knew that person's <laughs> name. We called them something, mm-hmm. usually mm. based on, like, a physical trait. <laughs> Um, <laughs> eyebrows. <laughs> That's nose ring. Yo, we called this one girl head wrap. Not because she wore them. I knew a girl named Hair But because they were always so bad. It oh. was always like wrapped so poorly. Damn. We called her head wrap. I don't know that girl's name. Damn. That's so true. That's. Is that a black thing? Or yes. Is that just like to like just call somebody by like something that they do. Yeah, I think that's of a, of a black tradition. Oh, <laughs> we used to call this girl Jerpies in high school because her name. Well, she ain't. You never listen. Her name was Jure, and she was like a nickel on the band bus. We was like, well, she got herpes. We were like, oh, that bitch named Jerpies. <laughs> <sighs> that's why I said it like that. <laughs> Message Miriam. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like if Dan you Kofa on Twitter, if you want to fight, honestly, I'm too tired. I'm gonna keep it a bean. Like if you want to fight, then like I don't know. There are other ways to upset me, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> like there are other ways to to get your revenge. If you're listening to this, jerpies, I'm sorry, <laughs> jerpies. One way that you could get revenge is by cash apping us. Yeah, that's a great way to get revenge is by so giving us money key. because we hate money. It's like capitalistic. It's um, so dumb. Yeah, it really angers us. My black joy of the week. Um, we're, we're, <laughs> we're on that. <laughs> Holy shit! Is um kind of similar, and it's a follow up to um last episode's Black Joy. Um, so I mentioned last week the or last episode the piece that I wrote about um this individual who I won't call disparaging names because I really do want like some sort of restoration, not for myself, but like for him as a person in society, like. For me, that's always the goal. I don't know how much I believe in it being possible all the time. Um, But I am sort of in this space of trying to stop canceling people. Mm. Um, 
except R. Kelly. Anyway. Yeah. Um, can't come to Wakanda. R. Kelly is definitely canceled. So anyway, I wrote this piece. Um, it's called Your Silence Won't Protect the Movement. Um, shout out to Audrey Lord, who yes. said Your Silence Won't Protect You. Amen. Um, the piece is on Medium under my name, Rhythm Keen. Um, so my black joy wasn't writing it. My black joy was the responses that I got to it. Um, I had a lot of DMs and a lot, I mean, like people were like finding me on Twitter and like, so like strangers, like I got a lot of responses from people I know, but my black joy was strangers who were reaching out that were like, thank you for writing this. Mm. Um, I can't write this or I can't say this in a public space, but I'm glad that you did. Mm. Um, which for me was sort of confirmation of the fact that I needed to write it. And so, um, yeah, that was my black joy was like feeling like people got something from it and hearing from other people that they felt like it was written in a way that was hopeful for some Mm. sort of restorative justice. Um, Because, again, I'm trying to get into that space and it's difficult, I think, to to even want that because I think we're sort of um, socialized to Mm -hmm. be vengeful. Yeah. Um, and like vengeance feels good, I mm-hmm. think, mm-hmm. in ways that aren't sustainable, mm-hmm. but like in the moment, mm-hmm. yeah. it's great. Um, but I'm trying to like move away from that and like figure out. And I, I also feel like as a person who is constantly advocating for prison abolition, like I can't do that in one breath and then the other breath be like, oh, drag and cancel this person. Mm-hmm. Like if I'm literally saying like you can't just be throwing people away for the rest of their lives, I can't then be like, mm-hmm. Oh, but throw this person away. Well, Except R. Kelly. Um. <laughs> <laughs> throw that nigga in the incinerator. <laughs> I feel like I'm. It's okay for me to hold on to that one. I think everyone should. Yeah, yeah. Because I feel like we actually haven't even like caught it. Right, all honestly, these years. haven't. Right, these niggas so are here go. like living. Right, and doing well, and yes. he hasn't been held accountable, and and he's never um, taken responsibility for yep. it himself. He's yep. never. Yep. You know what I mean? So it's not like it's not like he's. Yep taking responsibility and saying please forgive me and we're nope. like no nope. he's just like I'm out here living and life is great and yeah. the story like the, and I feel like the stories keep evolving yes and the shade keeps following him and the cloud keeps following him so it was one thing to be repentant or to atone but there was never a moment of any of that not a one yep so no I feel like he deserves a continual cultural drag yeah yes. that's fair Miriam your black joy of the episode oh god it was black really joy, hard to the think episode. of one because I am yeah, it's week this month has been trash. But but mm-hmm. but, but um thinking on it really hard. Uh it's gonna be Black Panther related, but it's gonna be Janelle Monet related. Mm-hmm. Um I love her. What do we have in common? Black pansexuals everywhere are getting their lives. Whole yes. lives. Whole lives. Because first of all, the joy of being able to sit in a theater and lust over everything that came on screen, like regardless of any kind of gender any kind of gender expression like the whole spectrum masculine and feminine feminine everything that passed the screen in the 100 and what 80 minutes mm. of black panther could have gotten me all of me hell yeah in entirety yes. no exceptions like <laughs> not even wale was that really wale I, I feel like I thought it was Wale. It I thought so it was Wale. Fast. That's exactly that's why I think it was Wale. Because <laughs> I saw it, I was like, "That's Wale." <laughs> there was, was a Wale, Wale cameo, like early on, like very early in like a village like scene, and I just haven't seen anything else about it. But I felt like it was Wale. But it happened so fast. I feel like it was Wale. What? what? Yes. Each time I saw it, I've seen it twice. See, I've only Each seen time, it once. I've I swear, twice, I think it's Wale. Wale. I think it's it Wale. Is so, it is so like it's really. It. Such and the thing, the fact that they like put the scene on him for like that short period of time mm-hmm. makes me really believe that this was Wale. I think it was. What? He was like yes. dancing or something, yeah. but just like like casually, yes. like Wale, like just like, <laughs> out on the street bobbing a little bit. Mm-hmm. The Baltimore in me has trained myself out of like seeing Wale because I'm just so annoyed with all the PG County. Oh, praise God. <laughs> so I don't even. I haven't known him since like 2009, and I still don't know him. I don't know. But I feel like now you have to watch this. He used again. to like visit my my school in undergrad. He would like show up on campus every couple of months. We were like, "Damn, nigga, are you taking mosaics? Like, the <laughs> fuck is you here for? Like, you in lecture, bitch? Like, why are you here again?" So maybe you blocked him out. But <laughs> yes. yes, I I'm definitely didn't pretty see sure Wale. that was him. 
<laughs> Damn. Well, everyone. So he's not included. Not included. Everyone with the exception of the white man and Wale, <laughs> they could have all gotten some except for Claw. Claw couldn't have gotten any. But um, yeah, like in- I like Claw's music references. Yeah, like Cla- Claw's little, but it, it just he was gross. But I liked his his taste yeah, in music. Yeah, it was fun. He was fun, but like whatever. He just <laughs> he just couldn't have gotten because he sounded like um like the guy who fought Floyd Mayweather. Mayweather. Yes. 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 Got me fucking way. Uh, McGregor. Yeah, I've been awful whatever that is accent, but he's not like that. <laughs> I would think it was supposed to be Irish. Oh shit. Well. <laughs> yep. So it was everybody being fine as hell in Black Panther. And then we're gonna get more on this later, but just my black queer loins. Yes. As it relates to Janelle Monet releasing them two videos. My God, my God. Yes. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. Yes. Because she always been, like, I've always want, mm, mm, we can, mm, all right, next next topic. We're going to talk about it. I mean, we can go right like into you that. might as well just dive in. Yeah. So, I, I would like love to dive in. Yes. There we go. You got I would it. I love yeah, to dive in. Yes. <laughs> so, like, one time. I have always, always, since the moment she came out and I was still in high school, had, like, this mm-hmm. huge crush on her. Mm-hmm. Like, holy hell. Mm-hmm. And she's just she's just finer and getting finer and finer. And yes. I don't, like, I don't know what to do with it or about it. So, like, when rumors surfaced back in 2000, whatever, mm-hmm. that she might be queer, yeah. I was like, I know she is. Yeah. yeah. I knew. Like, I know in my spirit. Yes. I was like, no, 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 no. Like, I, I know us when I see us. Yes. Like, I can, like, I know, I yes. know she is. And for her to drop that video mm. with Tessa Thompson, Lil' Fan Oh, yes. my God. I just... I felt like that was like a really cheeky, like, because they've been rumored to be together. Yes. So mm-hmm. I just thought it was cute that, like, so, like, I don't think her refusal to comment on it is about being closeted in any way. I think she's just super private and I'm not going to tell you who I'm dating. Yeah. Like, I'm not telling you who I'm dating because of privacy, not because of this person's gender, right? Yeah. Um, but I thought that was sort of like a cheeky little confirmation. Like, y'all been talking about it. Mm-hmm. And I post mm-hmm. her pictures all the time. And, like, now here we are in this video. And I'm still not going to answer your questions. Yeah. Like, I just and thought it was cute. Deal. And you will deal. And you will fucking you deal. You will deal. <laughs> just- See, full disclosure, I have not seen. I think I'm saving these for, like, dessert one, one like, yes. week. Oh, it's, it's a good dessert. I have not seen. And, and I oh, love it is good. Janelle Monae. And the more airtime Janelle Monae gets, the yeah. happier I generally I love become. Her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, just like you, the moment Janelle Monae hit the scene, I was like, we are one in the same. Right. Like, we like, come oh. from the same gay village. Like, yes. I, and then the whole black and white aesthetic, I was like, I under, the whole android. Yes. Anytime androids are used in Afrofuturism, in my experience, is usually some type of admission of sexuality mm. that can't be expressed. Mm-hmm. Um, and I love that. And I love the fact that Janelle Monae is just weird and just Afrofuturist. Mm-hmm. And it's just alive and beautiful. And then after Moonlight, Janelle Monae is a god. So I can't, like, like after Moonlight, I just, yeah. we're done. Uh, there was, because when, when <gasps> they got released. The boy to be from Moonlight, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, the yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. the boy. <laughs> and the shot. I love that he is getting so much yeah. airtime. Yeah. I'm sorry. Just little. Little. Little, little yeah. yes. Yeah. But, so back to Janelle well, Go saying? ahead. Right, so when they dropped, I was so excited that after, like, I listened to both tracks, like, over and over again, I went back to, um... Mm-hmm her second most recent album now mm-hmm. like electric lady mm-hmm. and electric like lady. i was just listening to it because before like all the skits on electric lady i would listen to them i'd be like okay like haha this is cute she really play on this android mm-hmm. thing but like she was just making such real commentary and there was one skit where it was like the guy whoever was running the radio show yes mm-hmm. on the album and somebody called in and he was like yep. robot love is queer yep. and he was like, what, what, what? And he was like, robot love is queer. And he was like, well, okay. And I'm just like, <laughs> Chanel been telling us. Yeah. She been trying to tell us and we ain't been listening. We wasn't listening. We she sorry, was gay babe. as hell and queen. Like, y'all ain't listening yes. to her. She yes. was gay oh, as yes. hell. Yes. yes. Yeah. Mm, I like the way Mary wear her tights too, girl. <laughs> Same. <laughs> Same, sis. Yeah. I adore her. Um. I was glad I got to see her a couple of times in Philly when she was still doing like smaller venues. Yes. Yeah, like I saw her at Johnny Brenda's. Are you oh, serious? Shit. Yes. What? Johnny Brenda. I would have lost all of my mind. It was and it was such a dope show. And she was like running around like of she course. does on that little yeah. bitty stage. Yeah, probably yeah. so fucking thankful. Yeah, that was dope. 
I, I saw dope. her a couple times in Philly, like Made in America, and then like twice at small venues. Like I saw her, mm-hmm. I think twice at the Electric Factory, and one Sounds with right. like all of Wonderland Records. And I was mm-hmm. at that. At oh, the, with uh, Ephus tour. And, yes. Yeah, the Ephus tour. I yeah. just ooh, also both the girls from Saint Beauty. Jesus Christ! Like <laughs> 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 it's the John with the short hair. And she got them cheekbones. She got that that jawline. Mm. I wish that was a thing anybody would ever say about me. Oh, that's been like the thing that I've always like looked but at you at other are people. The Jean with the short hair and the cheekbones. Not the cheekbones. Mm-hmm. You got cheekbones. Well, your cheeks are and cute. The apples. I'm looking at yeah, like, right now. Right. I have you have like, great apples. I have like Penny from Good Times cheeks. <laughs> oh. I want like cheekbones. Like yes. slice somebody with these cheeks just for a day. True. True. Just once. Honestly, like. Shorties with cheekbones can rule me. Look, they rule the world. Yeah. Uh, a pair of cheekbones. I'm telling you. Whoever mm. said, like, oh, look at that girl with them penny from good times. She, <laughs> oh, she just, ruled the world. Look at, look at that, that pie-faced girl. <laughs> no, nobody's ever checking Nobody for my pie face. Nobody ever said that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that girl. Her face looked like a bunch of Hawaiian rolls. You look at her. Can't wait. Yo, my, my, we have our strengths. We know what they are. It's fine. We grinded my friend up in the group chat because she looks like a brioche. <laughs> I just remembered that we did that. Oh, remind oh, me I'm to never sorry, be friends with friend. you. Your <laughs> ass wants a brioche. Your what? ass wants a brioche? Why the fuck not? I mean, don't put bread in your. You know what? It's your asshole. Do what you want with your asshole. Get into what you like. If you want to put bread in your Please asshole. Please don't limit me. You're right. I'm, I'm large. So, I'm I can so take more so tattoos. Yes. I'm sorry. I'm Who said sorry. that, actually? Daryl, all the time. <laughs> no, because I'm so used to Daryl. Daryl twice a day. <laughs> using the quote. <laughs> I can't remember who actually said it. I'm large. Now I'm sort of Look how trash. Because <laughs> I've, I've, mis- I've misused this quote so many times. That's such trash. But now I have to look. And the fact that Google knows exactly what I'm looking for. Google was like, Here we've we been waiting for you to use this. It is this. Whitman, Song of Myself. I was look right. at you. Oh. I remember some there? stuff. Mm. <laughs> I don't remember anything. <laughs> I, never, I remember sex references. That's about it. I remember... I was about to make these two separate things, and I realized mm-hmm. they're not. I was going to say, I remember <laughs> things related to music, mm-hmm. and I remember... Um, <laughs> things related to music. I was going to say uh, <laughs> sitcom theme songs. <laughs> in, in my mind, I really thought those were two separate things. <laughs> That's all I can remember. Damn. I remember sitcom theme songs. There was a like a video circulating on Facebook, people trying to remember sitcom theme songs, and I got every single one. Yes. Like, What's your favorite sitcom theme song? Ooh, um... The first one that comes to mind is Cousin Skeeter, and I'm probably gonna stand by it. I respect they it. They just re they just remade Stilo, and that shit was so mm-hmm. cold. And I love the way you move, and the way I had you no idea do this happened, thing. baby. Keep it coming on, cause I'm on <laughs> nobody else remember Cousin Skeeter. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember it being a thing. They just remade the Stilo. I mean, song. I was probably like in high school. Oh yeah, I was definitely seven. Yeah, so <laughs> certainly. Seven so there are years reasons old. I don't remember this. <laughs> I remember it being a show. I remember it being excited because it was black, but also it was like too far out of the realm of like things I would be doing with my time. I think the most iconic for me is Rugrats, though. Rugrats, I remember. Because I was a stan. Yeah. Like I had two mm. Angelica dolls. I had a Rugrats like board in my room. Your thing. You Angelica? would love Angelica. Lo- oh my gosh, I loved her bratty ass. Yes. I love Cynthia. Push and that kids, speaks so much to my BDSM ass. Like, oh. I always empathize with Cynthia. The bald headed baby doll. Yes, we all know who she is, Daryl. I'm, I'm now thinking what? about how to your BDSM, and I'm just picture you getting like dragged around by your scalp and silent. Because that's how Honestly? Cynthia happened. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a bad idea. No, especially if you had an Angelica like Dom. Angelica was the best dom. Like a, like a bratty dom. Hmm. Also, we're not going to make Angelica and Cynthia. We're not going to make this a dom <laughs> <laughs> What was your favorite Daryl song? <laughs> Daryl. Because we're not doing this. <laughs> At all. That was a BDS. I don't care what y'all say. Um, <laughs> um, favorite. Um, I want to say something like Big Bad Beetleborgs or something because that's the only ones I can really remember. I'm sorry, nigga, what? Big Bad Beetleborgs. Big Bad Beetleborgs. No. So we're so kind, kind of cable? close to the same age and I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> What? So what country did you grow up in? <laughs> Pencil- I was like, Pennsylvania. Um, this is U.S. It looked like Lauren recognized it. Yeah, I feel like Lauren got it too. N- n- kinda. Mm. Big yeah. bag Beetleboards? Big, big bad 
Beetleborg. So is this like what, what, what kind they? of what kind of cartoon? PBS they welfare witchcraft? No cable ass cartoon is this? <laughs> no, this was You're not gonna repeat it like it was a thing though. They were Beetleborg. Beetleborg. They were big and bad. Um, <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Oh. They were like Power Rangers. I was going to say, it looks very Power yeah. Rangers esque. I, I hated Power Rangers. I remember a TV show Power with Rangers. Beatles, but and was Rita. this it? This was, this, Rita was this at work. I However, I still hated Power Rangers. I could, huh. I, I, it was only the original Power Rangers. Um, but this was obviously the times when I was um, more typical as a boy. Um, my Big Bad Beetleborgs was my shit. And like, I would come home every day from school sit in front of the TV, turn this thing on mad loud and just sing the Big Bad Beetle Borks theme song wow. and just have it. There we go. Mine now feels really old <laughs> and I no longer want to share it. I feel like you should now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you gotta know. My all-time favorite TV theme <laughs> Um, the, <laughs> she, she about to say Three's Company. <laughs> About as old. <laughs> she about to say cheers. Matlock. <laughs> Mash. My do grandma do do loved do Matlock. My mom loves her some Mash. Um, <laughs> first of all, the Mash theme song was lit. Yes, the fuck it was. I am not even going for it. <laughs> oh my god, mama love her um, some Mash. It was um the theme from Family Ties. Oh, I don't, I don't even remember. What do we do, baby, Mm-mm. with our love? Hey. What do we do, baby? That was enough. I <laughs> I'm upset that y'all don't remember this. This is a brand new song for me. <laughs> yeah, like ooh, I don't know. What do we do without love? Um, <laughs> Become a teacher at 25? <laughs> no, you know what? It's it's, it's, it's it's what would we do without us? That's what it was. Oh, <laughs> whiskey. <laughs> you just <laughs> oh, I have a well. friend who's um listening to our podcasts now like right now in the moment sorry friend and now he's like, and he, i was like what are you listening to he was like oh one about threesomes and i'm like that doesn't do that's any, everyone yeah, that's, that's, that's doesn't do that's each podcast what sorry. i asked you was which, which one, one? Like, right tip drill like give me like they're a, all about threesomes the podcast is a threesome it really is what you guys don't know is that me rhythm and daryl are having a threesome right now on the air on air and we do it every episode you're welcome and we the drink of the day songs. is always daryl hey! I, hey! I felt it going too far there was a line was so no. there was a line i'm so sorry welcome I, to my world I felt it going and too you like far. pole vaulted over you didn't even like walk up to the line you know what's a shame i no longer have that reflex <laughs> I gag longer, reflex yo when my gag reflex went away in high school ooh. Stories I should tell? Question marks? Yeah, maybe not. Semicolon. Or you How, know what? Speak your truth. Well, you know what? Okay, How did so. we get here? How did we get here? How, the way we always get here. <laughs> <laughs> Booty <laughs> first. Nobody's supposed to be here. Oh, no, God. when my... um. Yo, wait. Did anybody remember the remix of that song? Yes. The, the fast one? The yeah. dance How, one? This no. time, I swear, I'm through. No, no, that no, one? no. The nigga one. Wait. Oh, what? Okay, when he goes, how did we get here? Bitch, I caught the bus. No! No, you remember that shit? You are so I'm going to take, I was going to say, I'm going to so guess, but I feel like that was like local Baltimore. radio <laughs> in Baltimore. So you Baltimore. just play that shit on the radio. Nobody's supposed to be here, bitch, I came to fuck. This is Baltimore. Um, this is Baltimore club music. Go ahead. <laughs> my heart says no, no, no but my dick said yes. Oh my no, God. God. Bitch, just get undressed, no? This changed just the entire get- mood of the song that I appreciate. But I've never heard this before. It was my it, chest hurt. It used to go off. This was Baltimore. This was Baltimore. This, this was Baltimore, Baltimore, and y'all thought it was national. Yes, it was not. Yes, That's so yes. many things. It was That's just Baltimore. So many things like lead water or something. Oh, oh. well, that actually is pretty national. That's pretty national. You're right. Yeah, that is pretty national. We had. I was um, weirdly enough to, uh, mentioned um, one of Steph's uh, t-shirt uh, hoodies looked like a central hoodie from my high school. Mm. CHS Lancers. Second oldest public high school in the country. Um, what did you have? Yes. <laughs> but I remember when um, the school district discovered lead in like all Philadelphia, like public school pipes, like when I was in high school. And so they switched us over from like lead water to like bags of milk and things like that um, because we had milk bags. Um, I don't even know where to start. Poverty. Fair. But those milk bags was everything and it had a specific taste. Mm-hmm. I forget the, the story because marijuana, but. I'm going to end it here. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a good move. Yeah, there was lead to water, so we didn't know how to I think the ending of that story proved the point <laughs> of the story. <laughs> is 
that. Go get your check, baby. <laughs> yes. Go get your check. If Here's you're the result. Lead, they shouldn't make it Yo, taste so sweet. Let me tell you how <laughs> everybody <laughs> had lead paint poisoning. Like everybody was coming up on a check, dog. And like <laughs> I had it twice. Check so my grandma was like. I was like, Grandma, we can get money, da 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 da. Because I was a kid and I was that aware because everybody had lead paint poisoning. It was like having the flu um, <laughs> growing up in Baltimore City public schools. That's real. But <laughs> I was like, Grandma, we can get a check because you got lead paint poisoning. And she, I forget what the fuck she said to shut me down. I was so sad though. I think it was something about me licking the walls. She was like, she was like That's not the school fault, you dumbass. <laughs> Look, grandma may have time. <laughs> she have no time. I, I also think it it speaks volumes <laughs> that like lead poisoning should have like no longer been a thing by oh, the time course. you were a kid. Oh yeah, no, it was a huge thing. I feel like that should have been like that. That was supposed to be tested out on like me and Daryl, and then like done by the time yes. you, you know were. everybody had lead paint poisoning. Like my cousin got a check last year for lead paint poisoning. They really love us. They don't. No, they don't, and like they actually don't, and like. I mean, it is what it is, but sometimes if I just sort of trail off and begin to, like, you know, look into the sky a little bit, not even, like, making a joke right now, like, I, guys. <laughs> it's probably lead. It's probably, like, <laughs> that little bit of lead. I'm looking at that damn sun. <laughs> <laughs> Get in here. <laughs> I used to not remember, like, standing outside for hours and just looking up. And in my mind, I was playing a fun game. <laughs> I was like, I'm playing a game with God and the angels, or we talk to each other. You are playing my- a game with God and the angels. <laughs> You really are. It's called Retinal Degeneration. You That's really just, are. It's sis. orchestrated by Baltimore City Public School. <laughs> <laughs> this episode is brought and to Mayor you by O'Malley. <laughs> Lead paint. Yes. <laughs> My grandma's like, get your ass. <laughs> but they call CPS on me. Yes. <laughs> your ass in his house. <laughs> Grandma My parents would threaten time. us with CPS. Yeah. Like, or what was it's not CPS here. It's um DHS. DHS. Our parents would threaten. My mom would be like, "You don't want to live here. I got DHS on the speed dial." My grandma like, would do that too to my brother. She, yo, I shouldn't say this. Here, whatever. She hit him in the head with a with like a soda bottle or whatever. She just like <laughs> just in a, in a moment of frustration, right. she just right. chucked it across the room and it hit him in the head. That's so real. <laughs> like it, it broke his his broke his skin. Whatever. A little I mean. bit. That He's nigga fine. fine. He's fine. fine. You're fine. Get up. He's okay. Get up. He fine. Get up. <laughs> Stop back and sleep. Go ahead. So, I remember we was going to the hospital and she was like, she was like, when you get in there, you tell him you fell. And he was like, and we were all very smart. So he was like, he was like, grandma, you sound abusive. Like that's like abusive. Right? He's like in high school. And she was like, would you rather go with CPS or you want to stay with me? Well, to be fair. And he was really? like, you know what? I do play yes, football. Really. I could have fallen. <laughs> It's not, it's not. It's not far fetched. It's the beauty of the way, Willie. Yes, but what these fried pork chops do? You know, oh, rest one of them you could stay on the football chops. team. I was never into fried pork. It was, for me, it was oh, shake and bake. I love. If fried I could shake and bake chops. some pork, some um, tofu right now, you can probably shake. You know, that's a and I've had it, and it's good as fuck. I'm writing my show notes. Shake and bake. Then invite yeah. me over when you do that. Oh, I will. Thanks. It tastes like like little pieces of popcorn. You just oh, pop it in your mouth. God. It's really yummy. That sounds awesome. Awesome. I have some tofu in the fridge. I just want I mean, some today. Up? I mean, what's up? What I don't up? have is shake and bake. Do they still sell that. shake and bake mix? I'm pretty sure shake and bake is What still is a shake thing? and bake besides just like flour and seasonings and crumbs? Uh-uh. It's real specific. These are steps. All right. You know, I've never had shake and bake. Sorry. And I can't, like my constitution won't allow me to add as much sodium as I'm pretty sure will is be needed. Is in shake and bake. <laughs> yeah. Plus, you wouldn't be able to replicate it. Like you could make what it is, but you're not going to be able to make it taste like shake oh, yeah, and bake. No. I've never had shake and bake, so I don't know. Praise your praise your life. Yeah. It's just it's I mean it's shake and bake and I help. Shake and bake. Yeah. And I help. <laughs> Question. Was the commercial that country across the nation or it was, was for that me regional? Too. It was okay. For me too. There was a little girl in the commercial and she was like, It's shake and bake and I helped. Oh. But I didn't know if that was like the South Carolina version or did everybody <laughs> see that? <laughs> but speaking of regionalisms, did anybody else grow up with you grew up with UPN, I'm guessing. Yeah. Like, yes. it, oh, yeah. Did you grow up with Destiny's the Child theme singing song just started the playing UPN, in my head. like, UPN, like, um, I don't know what it's, I guess, Ooh. what, Jingle or whatever? Ring my bell, remind like, me. UPN is up and up, and they did it to the beat of Jump and Jump. Oh, I don't remember that. No one remembers that. No. To be fair, to be fair, I did not have a lot of friends, so I could have made this up. <laughs> no, you <laughs> may have. Fair, you may have. I may have made this up. Quite However, possible this didn't happen. This, this screams as quite true. Which probably means I made it up. I'm if you're it. listening and you remember this thing, or if you just want to make Daryl feel better, please hit us in the comments. I don't remember that. 
I think you made or it. Or when up. Ray Charles did the lottery. That was a Pennsylvania thing, though. Ray Charles did the lottery. Yeah, it was Ray Pennsylvania. Charles did the lottery. The one and only Powerball. <laughs> <laughs> Ray Charles did not die for you to disrespect him in this manner. Oh my God. <laughs> what? My nigga, what was that? <laughs> And it's like, Daryl, you didn't even, in, you didn't even like, just like, you know, just imitate that shit. You became. <laughs> the one, you know, oh my God. You remember this? Okay. Why would you do that? Why would you do that where I can hear it? With an earshot of me. <laughs> Ray Charles did not deserve. <laughs> Actually, he probably did. He probably did. <laughs> he probably did deserve. You he was sweet. Come here, Ray. Girls wrist. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ray probably deserves. <laughs> Musicians are trash. They anyway, are. they are. Don't we date one. Had... Don't date musicians. Don't musicians date are trash. Don't, don't, don't date artists. artists. Don't date musicians. Don't date poets. Don't date fuck. Get you a contractor and live your best life. Yes. Honestly, they gonna cheat on you too. But at least you <laughs> get least you shelves get and cabinets and shit. Okay. Yes. All right. They gonna cheat on you, but like not only will you get paid, but like they will have planned for the future. Yes. That's what artists don't do. Hell yes. yes. Like artists don't Hell plan yes. for the future. They don't have like IRAs mm-hmm. and shit. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. they just got. They got right now. I've been touring money and good dick. <laughs> <laughs> and that is it. Not even they have gun. good dick and indecision. That is it. <laughs> you know what's not a fucking lie? What you just fucking said? <laughs> okay. See, that's what all because I have this thing where one, I trash all fire signs because they are fucking trash. Wow. And then two, sorry, you're outnumbered here. Um, Excuse me. I'm fantastic. Is what it is. What you gonna do about yeah, okay. it? I've never done anything wrong in my life. What okay. do you mean? Fire right. sign propaganda. And then <laughs> the second is that I trash artists all the time, mm-hmm. but I tend to always find myself Look. in relationships with Leo poets and also oh, other Leo oh, artists. Oh, oh, Leo so that it's, yes. like a mess. that's a mess. That's a it's hot mess. mess. As, as a fire sign trash. and a poet, mm. yeah. I will say, don't date a fire sign or a poet. Mm. Even if they don't come in the same package, because I dated a poet Earth sign, Mm-mm. and like, wait a minute, wait, I don't got time. relax, <laughs> relax. You know, and this person knows because I always, always, always drag him for being a Virgo, relax. <laughs> AKA Satan, relax, <laughs> Satan. We're amazing. I feel like, I'm like, like, fuck no, no. Virgo no. poets are amazing. The- we are a amazing friends maybe and grounding amazing people to plan shit maybe force in your amazing event planners maybe amazing people to edit your poems maybe help your spirit but partners we're amazing partners (laughs) maybe partners in a game of chess we're great that's about it don't you let a virgo be your partner and nothing else those are amazing (laughs) especially virgo poets born in Mm. september no we're incredible i feel like if you need to be told every way you did something wrong but still be loved in the process? What you mean you still be loved in the process? What Virgo have you known that has to still love you in the process? <laughs> I am partial to Virgo. I'm also an Earth sign. So I'm great. Oh, see, that's because you're an Earth sign. You guys, you Earth signs, do your little Earth sign friendship thing. <laughs> and honestly, it's really foreign to I me. I think everybody needs to relax. <laughs> and let's move on. Let's move on and all agree that you can't bring fire up. signs are trash. <laughs> yeah, like, what I was what? thinking yeah, of. I'm so sick of the fire sign slang. I'm about to get you together like Monique did Charlemagne. Okay. <laughs> uh, can we talk about that interview briefly? <laughs> what? 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 Yo, I just want to walk into a room like, hello, my sweetness. <laughs> Dream somebody out. Yo, or, you, can oh. get up, you can get up and, and so hold me. It's like the fact that you can I either say permission. their names yes. or keep that shit on the playground. Like, yes, <laughs> yes. That interview was so layered for me. I'm not going to lie. I didn't watch the whole thing because I have a strict don't watch the Breakfast Club policy. Yes. yes. Um, I broke it for Crit and I broke it for Michael K. Williams. Uh, like I legit have a friend who was on Breakfast Club who was like, "Oh, you didn't watch that," and I was like, "No, oh, I, I don't watch that. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I didn't break that for you." Um. So I didn't watch it, but I watched clips of it because it kept like popping up and it was like hard to avoid. I feel I think I feel differently than I felt the last time we discussed Monique. Mm-hmm. Same. Like, I think I yeah. feel more in support of her. Yes. yes. Same. But I do have this conflicting thing of. I don't ever want to tell somebody how to express their anger mm. or how to react or respond to um, wrongdoing. Mm. Yeah. So that's on the one hand. On the other hand, I have a very strong personal reaction when I feel like people are condescending to me. Mm-hmm. Mm. So for somebody to constantly, if it were me, for somebody to constantly call me like sweetie or oh, sweetness, yeah. yeah, 
I would be ready to fist fight in the <clears throat> hallway. I hate, I hate. Yes. I hate. Yes. Even if you're not doing it in a condescending way. Like, I hate to order food and you be like, okay, sweetie, I'll be right. I hate that. I hate it. Yeah. Like, I want to fight right now. <laughs> so, I have those two conflicting things. Like, I feel like you're not wrong, but I also feel like it's difficult to, because in that interview, she said something about um, being a fat black woman. And then people jump to correct her. That pissed me off. Like, Ooh, how do you correct myself? Somebody, yeah, somebody was like, "But you're not fat." And I was like, "Did you? Did, did you not just hear me did, identify as such?" Did, also, like, even if like Monique is not fat now, or like, or like, you know, doesn't identify as fat now, her career and most of her time in the fat. spotlight, she was certainly yeah. like a fat black woman, and like we all know because we all made the jokes, girl. And yeah. even if she's not still, that's how you're that's responding what, yeah. to her. Like she, like. Yeah, her like she is. Yeah, so, don't, so like, don't sit here. Don't in the moment try to then like retract that. That's like somebody saying, benefit. as a black woman, oh, African American, like, Ooh. like shut the fuck. I said black. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> who was I saying? Oh, so she she does this thing to me where she positions that as part of her argument as like, don't mammify me, right? Mm-hmm. But then she does the whole like. Mammif- like sweetie, sweetie, lay your head on my bosom, which is her right, but it, it makes it difficult for me to follow yeah. the argument. Yeah. yeah, it's like which side of this, and it's not to say that they can't both exist. So this is something that, like, and, and not to cut you off, but this is but you've been in Philly long enough that that's a thing. <laughs> not to cut you off. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it just gets into our spirits. It's that's fine. true. That is really true. I'm so sorry. Oh also, I was God. done. You didn't cut me off. <laughs> <laughs> But, like, this is something that, like, has, that resonates with me as, like, a fat black woman is the, like, don't mammify me, but also, like, I am going to take up the role as mammy. And I think it's part part of it for me is, like, me being socialized Mm -hmm. that way for so long Mm -hmm. and me being very understanding of, like, my role in the room. Mm. Like, when I walk in the room, regardless of the room, like, I I am the, Mm -hmm. the, okay, sweetness, okay, baby, Mm -hmm. the da-da-da-da, because, like... That has been how I've been socialized. And um, a friend of mine asked me a while ago, so we were talking about just um, my relationships with people around me. And she was like, do you think that you're everybody's mom because you genuinely want to be? Mm. Or like, are you everybody's mom because like you've been made that? Like, mm. because that's something mm-hmm. that sort of happens to you. Mm-hmm. So I think that a lot of time, you know, what we want to escape, we still like we still find comfort in that identity because we've been that for so long. Mm-hmm. Whether or not we say yeah. like, oh, well, you know, don't don't take and carve this identity out of me. Don't like, don't make me this. Don't label me this. Like if I then still take those characteristics and like find myself in that identity because I have lived there for so long and mm-hmm. because like that's who I know and when I am, then I feel like that's sort of valid too. Oh, absolutely. And it's still valid to say, don't do this to me. Yeah. Like me, me doing this and, and taking on this mm-hmm. role for whatever reason mm-hmm. still does not excuse you and give you permission to put me in that role. Very true, very true. Mm. And I just, I'm in support of Unique. Oh my God. Unique. Um, goddamn whiskey. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Unique was on Monique. Glee. I'm also in support of Unique. Do you remember yeah. Unique? No. Unique was, um, I'm trying to remember. oh, what's their name? It's an actor who I adore. Oh, um, the character was Unique. It was, um, <clears throat> it was like, a, Unique was a singer from a different school on Glee that was like genderqueer. I can't think of the actor's name. This is not where I thought this was Glee going. Glee would name a genderqueer person unique. Unique. I thought Unique was the character on Flavor of Love. Probably. Probably both. <laughs> but I do remember Unique from Glee. Yeah. I, miss I really liked Glee. Love. Anyway. Um... <laughs> I miss, miss uh, Steph, or Stephanie. I miss uh, Tiffany Pollard. Yeah. Yeah. Where is New York? Um, Big Brother in, some I money. think, in Europe. But I think she just she, got kicked off. It was Big Brother London, I think, and they kicked mm-hmm. her black ass off. And she deserved it, but it was good. I mean, get your coin. Get your coin, man. So, and the same for Unique. Uh, unique. Jesus. <laughs> Monique. <laughs> get your coin also. Yeah, I I, I want to make space for her making her argument how she makes her argument. Yes. Yeah. I still don't like her husband, but whatever. Um, But she likes her husband, and that's what matters. Trash. Um... But yeah, when, <laughs> when Monique looked at Charlemagne, who I can't stand, <laughs> and said something, she made reference to um, uh, Birth of a Nation mm-hmm. and said, mm-hmm. like, and that brother who 
turned his wife over yeah. to the to the master you that brother and like gathered her bags and walked out yep. i was like yes. <laughs> yeah yeah that gif of her just like giving them finger wags that double finger wag yes turn his hand, give them that finger very finger baltimore wag. oh my god i just mm. i felt so like known in love yes. and like people on twitter have been taking that gif and circulating it with like <laughs> quotes from parent teacher conferences mm. <laughs> he won't be giving you no more problems miss jenkins i'm gonna whoop your ass when we get home let's go y'all have thank you for my time you have a good night. and that's what she did and gathered her belongings and got on through. Gathered my belongings. Yeah. That's my new favorite gift, honestly. I mean, it's a great one. That's how I'm trying to leave this country. Double finger, finger wag. Double, double finger, finger wag. wag to every motherfucker. Get your purse. And you know what? You colonizing bitch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let's go. Get on the plane. Mm-hmm. Huh. Mm-hmm. Speaking it of colonizers. Just can't even spell plane. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they just can't even spell liberate. Uh, um, yes, colonizers. Let's all make a collective vow to bark at white people. Such a beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. I've been doing. I really. I'm not even lying. I have been. They doing would at least this treat you years. better because they love dogs. Child. Look, they really do. Let me say this as a black person who owns a dog. The amount of times I have mm-hmm. encountered white people mm-hmm. who love and directly address mm-hmm. my dog mm-hmm. and act like I'm not standing mm-hmm. there. Speak on it. Mm-hmm. That was a triggering experience for me as a dog owner. Yeah, it happens to me a lot, actually. Sam's such a Negro, he don't even respond. Hey, look, ma'am. I'm sorry, you see my mother, right? <laughs> you ain't speak to my mom. <laughs> that boy is hard. It's a beautiful thing. He actually ignores everybody but children and like people in my apartment. So like, he if loves you, If you're Sam. in my you. space, then yeah. Well, if you're in my <laughs> yeah. space, then he knows that like I've allowed you to be there yeah. and that he has to acknowledge you. But like on, on the street, he's like, mm. <laughs> You're taller than three feet. We're not doing this. I love Sam, honestly. He's trash. He's so That's great. why you love him. He's trash. Because he's trash. He is garbage. He's garbage and he's cute. Uh, so he gets away with it. I took him out to walk and he was like, no, it's cold. I'm going to pee right here by the door. We're Absolutely. Going back in. <laughs> Absolutely. It's like, you know what, Sam? You're right. When you take him out and it's raining, you have to get him out the door before he realizes it's raining oh. or he'll turn around and go back inside. <laughs> <laughs> We gotta do this right now. Yep. Never mind. Mm-hmm. I'll, no, I'll just do it on the carpet. I could just be in the hallway. And that's fine with that's me. cool. Okay. Well, it's happening. Um. <laughs> so that failed video. segue was attempting to talk about Black Panther. <laughs> Black Panther. Oh, I don't know how the fuck you got there. So I've only seen it once. I have bought five tickets. Yes. <laughs> Two of those intentionally for other people. Mm-hmm. But what does that make? Those other three. Two tickets. Because one time I did see it. The other two tickets were an attempt to actually go. And I ended up taking yes. one of them. <laughs> yes. Um, so the person I was supposed to go see it with um, got sick or has been sick, but it was like, it's fine. We're going to the movies. And then that didn't work out. So I was like, here are these two tickets. Hopefully this week I'll get back for a second, for time. A second time. Yes. Thanks for paying for my second time. <laughs> You're welcome. I really appreciate it. <laughs> um, it's like, yes, free Black Panther. Yes, it was just so good. It was so beautiful. Like, visually, it was so beautiful. I mm-hmm. felt like... So, the first time I went to Disney World, I was 25. Because my partner at the time thought it was sad that I had never been to Disney. Oh. So, he, like, surprised me with a trip to Disney. And he kept commenting. Um, it was really dope because my birthday's in September. So, like, there weren't a bunch of kids there. It's late September. So, the kids were in school. We had Disney World basically to ourselves. And he kept saying that on the on the rides <laughs> that my face lit up like a little kid. <laughs> oh. He was like, it was really sweet and really sad. <laughs> but I kept catching myself in Black Panther feeling like that. Like I oh. felt like I was looking at the screen like a little kid. And I was just I like, that. everything was so beautiful and the music. And I felt like it was for me. And like we were sitting next to um, this white couple. And I remember. Bark. I feel like. <laughs> Um, it was a scene where um, in Jadaka, a.k.a. Eric Stevens, a.k.a. Killmonger, I hate mm-hmm. that his name is Killmonger, did something like trash mm-hmm. that like if you hadn't yet like full on like sided with him, you were supposed to universally acknowledge that it was trash. Mm-hmm. And this couple next to us like clapped. Literally the only people in, of the, course. in the, of course. the theater who got excited about it. And I leaned over and was like, oh, that's a good thing to you? <laughs> Oh my god! And I was like, "That's so out of character for me." I blame Black Panther. Oh my god! 
Like, what are you doing, sis? Bark. Relax. Bark. I, I feel like it's I've, in all the like the few thing pieces that I've had that I've read after Black Panther because I've purposely been avoiding thing pieces. Same. Um, Same. I've made room for a few. I'm going to live in this joy for a little bit before we have to start the discourse. Dissecting. Yeah. Um, and then also, I, I I tend to find with, like, cultural, like, artifacts, it's a little bit better to just let the cream cream. Mm. And then it's like, everyone can have their opinions, but I want to read the the good ones. Yes. Um, I, I've purposely avoided them. Um, but I do think it says something about the the one branch of the conversation that I got into that's more of a think piece kind of thing is um, uh, really – Questioning Kill Killmonger. Questioning um, is Killmonger actually a villain, mm-hmm. um, or is who's the protagonist? That's T'Challa, right? Mm-hmm. Or is T'Challa the villain? In what ways? What ways do they both exhibit villainy? And in what ways? Honestly, is villain villainy is a failed European concept. But in what ways is mm-hmm. it a failed concept? Um, and it's 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 just a really interesting back and forth because I didn't find myself necessarily aligning with either of them in mm. any political sense sexually mm-hmm. yes, yes. Um, <laughs> certainly, i am me certainly. um yeah but it's like in terms of in terms of actual like political elite like leanings i think i was just mbaku but i also feel like that's because i have latent um q fantasies mm. and so when he barked it woke my soul up yes um but yeah, that's like it's just, I'm I'm really I'm I'm interested to see it again and then also to get into the thing pieces at this point. So, are we far enough out yet to, to spoil? Oh yeah, don't I mean spoiler oh. alert. That's it. Oh, yeah, that's I what make you sure get. I a note up here. Yeah, <laughs> like y'all should have got it together by now. Yeah, Absolutely, it's been like two weeks. Since. Um, only one, but still <laughs> felt like two. You know, seven hundred million dollars in you've one had, week. You've had two weekends. All right, and you fucked it up. Um. But are we far enough out yet? Because I, f- I feel the same way. Mm-hmm. And I actually have, like, said to people, like, who were trying to, like, get into the think pieces already. Mm-hmm. I was like, good or, like, really only good. H- mm-hmm. Here's the time for you to say good things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we're not yet doing negative. Yeah. yeah. Because, no. Um, But I'm wondering how long that lasts. And I'm wondering if we're yet far enough out from it to engage the conversation and I saw a really interesting take on it, but to engage the conversation about the lack of, um, I guess, direct per- portrayal of queerness. Mm. Ooh. Ooh. I'm always here for that conversation, TBH. I didn't ever think, I don't know why I don't think about I queerness. For, for the show, at least. <laughs> so I didn't That's think, real. I didn't think about it until like people started like doing think pieces that I was ignoring. Yeah. Um, and to be fair, I've been saving them. Like I'm saving them on Facebook to like go mm-hmm. back, but uh, just not yet. But somebody had a really interesting thread on Twitter. Um, They were from an African country. I can't remember which. But they suggested that the notion of coming out Mm -hmm. is an American notion. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so in a film that's not taking on Mm -hmm. like sort of these Western concepts... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That it that that it not being directly said in the film wasn't negating or erasing queerness, but rather it was sort of erasing the need for it to have to be um, discussed yeah. separately or yeah. like established yeah. or like proclaimed yeah. the way that Western culture makes you have to create that mm. space. I don't know if that's even true. That's a read. Um, but I, I found it interesting. Thread. I read that thread and while I do think that like, you know, that is a concept that like, you know, because I, the person was saying in the thread, like, you know, queerness is just a thing that happens and happened and like, it doesn't really get talked about, but like not, not talked about in the same way that it doesn't get get talked about in America where you're hiding, but just like, it's not noteworthy. Right. Um, and while that is cute, (laughs) I do think that like in the comics, there was a queer storyline between two of the Dora Milaje. Mm. It was, I forget who it was, either um, Ayo and Aneka or Ayo and Okoye. And I hope it was Okoye's fine ass. Yes. But um, like, like there was queerness happening. Mm-hmm. So just me thinking like, okay, like if it was Ayo and Okoye, like they purposefully then made Okoye couple up with mm-hmm. Wakabi's mm-hmm. bitch ass then. Mm. And like, I didn't read the comics. So like, if I'm wrong, then I guess like, I don't know, drag me. But if that is the case, then like that was a purposeful erasure, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and like a purposeful, like, you know, straight washing, mm-hmm. I guess. And I also don't think that like it was because people are saying 
when that when the article dropped, like you know the erasure of queerness in Wakanda, people were saying like, "Oh my God, y'all the most annoying generation ever!" Like, y'all want to be seen in everything. Like, gay people yes. get everything. It's, it's black people's time. First of all, the who's fuck? to say they're not both? What what are what is intersection now? Yeah, like, like like gay people get everything. It's black people's time. What about the black gay people? Hi, <laughs> bitch. Choose one. Right, like choose well, one. And also, the like yeah, the whole reason why this is such a big deal. And, like, people are, especially, I'm talking specifically to my peers, to, like, black Twitter, 20-something millennials. We all just want to be like, yeah, representation. is because y'all were so hyped to see this representation. Mm-hmm. So, like, is it too far then? No. Right. To also want representation? No. Like, right. like really, are we? Especially y'all because annoying, we're dealing Y'all want to be seen in everything. Period. Like, y'all, mm-hmm. y'all are going to see this movie mm-hmm. because you want to be seen. Right. Like, you realize that? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I just, I think it's nuanced <laughs> but i also do think that there was an erasure of sorts mm. and then if, in, without having like thought about this previously i think there's something to be said about having any same gender institution and then not talk about the queerness that's involved there even if it's not sexual queerness um, i think that there is a level of um same gender affection that could have been displayed that was never displayed. Um, so I get the argument that I think, I think the idea of coming out is a Western and it's a white Western and it's a late like development, development, developmentally white Western feature. Um, and it's, ta- I think tied and traced to capitalism. If you are on that vein of E. Sedgwick and the epistemology of the closet kind of thing. Um, I think there's something to be said about that, but I also th- think that there's something to be said that even in societies where homosexuality was never a distinct and identifiable identity type that still does not mean that same sex affection was devoid. Mm -hmm. Like it just meant that it just wasn't significant enough to distinguish it from other types of affection, Mm -hmm. but to not display it at all seems purposeful. Um, Especially because you take the time to display and to talk about other types of love stories that really, I think were kind of tangential to the Mm -hmm. storyline. And I I think it's, and then I think it also, for us to talk about this, I think it's interesting and it's important to talk about how the entire concept of blackness period to me was queer all of it is queer like afrofuturism is queer Mm -hmm. um and so i think we're going to talk about queerness then i think we have to branch out of just the same sex relationships of it Mm -hmm. and then just recognize the fact that we are talking about a territory in africa that was never touched by colonialism so this by definition all of it is queer they exist outside of our understanding of gender Mm -hmm. they exist outside of our understanding of race to Mm -hmm. be completely fair right um, so if we want to talk about it, then like let's let's dig in and talk about it. Yeah, because like really realistically, what queerness is is in opposition to the Word. like the systemic norm. Word, right. you know, like it's just opposition to what you know to be true Word. and what you assume as being natural. Yes. So like Wakanda is queer in nature by definition. Mm-hmm. Like by definition, like this this futuristic society in which you know like gender gender does not dictate role is yes. that's so queer. Right. Yes. That's so queer. Yes. So right. like. Yes. I just don't get why it's asking for too much for me to have seen somebody mm-hmm. grab a Koye's mm-hmm. butt. And that's really mm-hmm. just, yes. <laughs> that's my hurt piece. Okay. I wonder, because I feel like um, Ryan Coogler, Coogler, mm-hmm. um, he's so beautiful on West Coast. 215. <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel like he's really smart. Mm. Right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like I saw, so I saw something about, um, Ava DuVernay, it was a very short, it wasn't even worth being written mm-hmm. um, other than I got information from it. But I had forgotten that she was originally tapped as the director. director. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and then her very brief comment was like, she and the studio, I think, weren't seeing eye to eye on some things. Um, and so she walked away. And then now Ryan Coogler got, I don't, I don't think this film could have been this film without Ryan Coogler. I mm-hmm. think this was mm-hmm. his film mm-hmm. to make. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I think it's incredible. Mm-hmm. I think he's brilliant. Mm, um, mm. There was a video that I posted that was, um, I forget the name of the like series that does this, but it was like him dissecting the fight scene in the casino mm. and like mm. him pointing out yeah. like some of the Easter eggs and yeah. like talking about like why it was important to do this in this way. And um, even confirming like, so I thought this was like a super teppy thing that somebody made up. Cause they were like, yeah, if you look at them standing there, then this red and the black and the green, but he like actually <laughs> confirmed that that yeah. was like intentional and a thing. And I was like, Oh, okay. Um, but I just think he's, I think he's really smart and really intentional and really great. I say that to say, 
I wonder if, because I don't think that he is, I don't think that this thought of um, queerness in terms mm-hmm. of sexuality escaped him. Mm-hmm. And I don't think it's a thing he would have been afraid to touch. Mm-hmm. I wonder what his thoughts and process were about the majority of black America and like what their thoughts and perceptions might have done in regards to the film. Mm. Meaning like if uh like no tep America got wind oh, of yeah. like a oh, queer yeah. relationship oh, yeah. in the film. Oh yeah. I don't know. And that's that's not that's not excusing a compromise, but I just wonder if that played into his thoughts. I wonder that too. I mean I also like, wonder like it's still Disney. Yeah. yeah. So I wonder yeah, like, yeah, yeah. how that played into it. And I don't know enough about Disney and other Disney films to know if there's like an example. I, I for well, I don't think that. No, I definitely wondered that. And I, somebody brought up that point saying, well, it's Marvel and da, 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 da. But then like, I, I just, I just feel like this isn't the first time, mm. no. you know, with either franchise, it just feels like this is not the first time that this has happened. It can't be, Mm-mm. it can't be the first time Mm-mm. someone's been queer Mm-mm. in these franchises. Mm-mm simply what it what it comes down to for me and like even if it is the first time is it not time oh for sure you know like is it not time then for sure hmm. so yeah but i i love the film i stand like it was fantastic i just have a i just have feelings for okay i just have feelings for her when she threw that spe- mm. i legit left that film thinking about shaving my head again Oh, oh, that was so fucking beautiful. Oh I was God. like, I just don't know. I feel like I need this in my life. Um, I'm trying to keep strong, though. I'm almost two years in. We're going to keep going. <laughs> um, Do your best, sis. I'm trying. Um, Mbaku could still <laughs> call me. Funny thing, though, and this is <laughs> this is who I am as a person. Super attracted to Mbaku, not as attracted to... Um, the actor who plays Mbaku. I can't remember his name in the moment. Like, he fine in real life. But the character is, what, is, is it's, who it's I'm... It's the man was sitting in the, in the tundra with the, with the fur on. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's who does that's it for vision. me. I I'm see pictures of the actor in, like, a suit, and I'm just like, okay, he cute. Mm, all right. See, he looks a little bit too respectful for me as an actual person. <laughs> yes. But as Mbaku, <laughs> he is. looks like he could be <laughs> quite disrespectful towards me. Yes. Like, quite, like quite let me go on about my whole business like I can be as angry as I want to be he's gonna sit in his throne completely uncared like does not give a fuck Unbothered. Will bark at me we will fuck then have vegetarian food because I still believe Yay. that they were vegetarian and then that's we will go said. from there that's what I mean I'm with it like just, blow my back out in this mountain sign me up yes put me in the snow um spe- related to the conversation that we had earlier and I, I meant know, that more than I don't, know. Like. Oh my God. <laughs> I don't know if this conversation was on the air or not but um Chadwick Boseman yeah not super attracted to um uh T'Challa However, but Chadwick Boseman though, because Chadwick is country as hell. He got that really? Oh, he's so country. Two one five. We love a country nigga. Look, he's mm. actually from the town that my grandma was from. Oh. <laughs> so my mom was like, "Y'all might be cousins," and I was like, "No, no, 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 no mom, mom, no. no. <laughs> that's not what we want." My best ass. That did nothing for me. I'm like, okay, that's easy. <laughs> Only one car to the family reunion. That's and on that Stop note, it, I hate you. What? Thanks for listening for all these episodes. Oh my God. <laughs> this was our last. Right. We appreciate you tuning in. We're sorry Daryl has ruined this for everybody. All I'm saying is. But now that Daryl's officially brought incest into the conversation, we have to shut shit down. Ugh, I hate when that happens. Can't have nice things. But here's the question I want to leave you all on. <laughs> Why has there been no th- think pieces about vibranium sex toys. I feel like... See, because it I collects kinetic like energy, and if you nut on that nigga. thing, that shit gonna knock your ass across the Guess room. what I need! <laughs> <laughs> you know, the question was, that why haven't there been any think pieces? And I think that's because you need to write it. Word! Vibranium sex toys. I just don't... I just can't imagine that being a good thing. Like, I don't need any sex toy collecting my kinetic energy. Uh, yeah. Look, if no. that's what Daryl wants to sign up for, you know what? That is some Daryl ass shit. It is. You're an Olympic bottom. 
Yeah. I keep forgetting. Yes. But I feel like I've released enough kinetic energy in the forms of up and down strokes over the course of my lifespan. That was wasted. Nigga! What did you get back Nigga! from it? I could have powered American cities! <laughs> I, feel like I am the solution back. to the energy crisis! Yes. Oh my God. And now, like, my right hand is so much more swollen than my left hand. Oh I only God. open up jars with my right hand. How did we oh get here? My, God. my left hand is my baby hand. <laughs> <laughs> Greg, this is my good hand. <laughs> You know, I, I try so hard every episode. I barely try. <laughs> My germs. <laughs> try that, and fail. That, that, that see. <laughs> I don't know why I'm here. Oh, God. Oh, make room for fish. Yes. God is in the holy <laughs> I'm a masochist, is why I'm here. That's the answer. Fanny coming through. <laughs> We need supervision oh and we have none. Yeah, and this is the happens when we have no supervision. People like, don't like, get the reference. Scary movie too. Yo. That's our shit. Uh, oh, Shakespeare. No, it's not your, Brenda. Brenda, oh, Brenda is my solution okay, to every let social me tell you situation. How often I think about that fucking nasty scene with Brenda, where he was like, "Get nasty for me, baby." She was like, "Ooh, I'm these sh- walls, right?" <laughs> I have never seen this film. Oh, girl. It's just a skeleton. It's I'm a in your mouth. <laughs> and I'm a shit on your dick. My sister, my younger sister Kim, growing up, will walk around the house saying those quotes. No, no context. <laughs> no context. And my parents just be like, what the fuck? Like just look at, but no one, and because we were all neglected, but neither of my parents felt important, like felt it necessary enough to inquire. To, to inquire, like why are you walk around the house, little girl, talking about peeing on the walls and shit. But also my parents were freaks, so. Aww. So much happening. Honestly, like no, I don't. We don't talk about it enough. But like Brenda from the Scary Movie franchise, I love like her. she needs her own. Wait, Wait is that representation Regina matters? King? Regina Hall, Regina. That one, but yeah. Oh, okay. Shakespeare in love, girl. <laughs> representation fucking matters. It does. Oh my god. Yeah, Ray. <laughs> yeah, Ray. I'm a shit on these walls, Ray. <laughs> And like whenever, whenever I'm having sex, and like somebody like wants me to be nasty, I just that's like, where you go to. That's exactly like, right. Mm, yeah, right. Mm, yeah, dad. Mm, yeah, dad. <laughs> I'm gonna shit on these walls, dad. <laughs> no, it's impossible. To, wait, did we? Was that part of the conversation on air? I don't. Oh, oh my god! It doesn't even matter anymore. It doesn't even matter. I don't think it was. Nothing matters. But no one, no one. This is what you signed up for. Yeah, if, I mean, if, if it was on air, then you volunteer. You opted into this. So listener. guess what? So here you are. Here you are, femme. <laughs> You're welcome. That was so aggressive and it turned me on. And I don't know why. <laughs> yes, I'm turning you down. I don't know why. I'm why. Like free meal. I am like, you really will. Look, hey. <laughs> if getting Watch, free meal isn't what the like the end game, <laughs> why are we here? That liter- I was going back and forth with a sex partner the other day and we were talking about like ideal sex fantasies and um, we were all we were like building up. So it was like almost like um, that game where you say a line and then say a line and then mm-hmm. but we were doing it in like sync and it was actually building up to a great sex fantasy. Ooh. And then like it, like it was like every- and everyone comes and I guess he thought that was the end of it. And I was like, yeah. And then I get up and make <laughs> us breakfast. <laughs> he was like, you know what? That is so you. He was like you're right. Yeah, like I just make everyone breakfast, make sure everyone's comfortable. Mm. Yeah. Like you want some more maple syrup? Like that is that is completely me. No, I don't. I want to fuck somebody who makes me breakfast. That's me. I'm a full service fuck. That's what I'm trying to say, Daryl. Let's hook up. I've been trying to hook up with you for like months, Daryl. Damn Here's it. Here's the moment. Even if the end game is for some vegan tacos, I still want to hook hey, up. Yes. I make really good vegan tacos, and I make great non-vegan pancakes. Awesome. I eat really good pussy, but I don't know what that's going to do for us. It's translatable. It's translatable. Probably. Yeah. There's a skill somewhere in there. Probably. Vibranium sex toys. Now, see, if my tongue was laced with vibranium. Praise God. That might help. You might just use some cocaine. Some respect. Probably get to what you need Wait to do. Wait a minute. I got crackheads in my family. Calm down, Me sir. Me too. I feel oh, like you are both individually the reason. <laughs> Ryan Coogler was like, "Nope, I'm not even. I'm not. I'm not bringing this in. I'm not even putting this in here." <laughs> okay, but think about like in Wakanda though, there probably are vibranium sex toys because to be. there's just a wealth of vibranium there. Yeah. So like, there's probably like you know really expensive high end vibranium sex Hell toys yes. in Wakanda. Yo, and absorb my kinetic energy. The idea of fucking the Wakandan genre was already exciting enough. Child, but yet here we are. Child. And somehow it has gotten more enjoyable for myself. Ooh, lay my mom Oh my God. Don't know where mm. that came from, but we said that growing up. What did y'all mm. say? 
Ule my mom bule. Y'all racist. We are. That's, that's, that sound racist as hell. I'm thinking about whatever um, little tune was from the the soundtrack. Everybody said geeky geeky geeky. So that was <laughs> no because Kendrick Lamar said it on the soundtrack. Happened. This was actually that's a thing. Um, that's redemption. This is actually yeah. a thing. Yeah. Mine is um, Atonement by Lindrick Kamar. I'm not doing this. With you. <laughs> that's actually my favorite song from the film. It's really good. Redemption, not uh, Atonement. 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 <laughs> by Lindrick Kamar. Atonement is not it. My favorite is King's Dead. That shit goes hard as fuck. It's a really good soundtrack. Yeah. I heard a lot of people were really upset that there wasn't more Afrobeat on it. Um, But you know what? I feel like that gives them an opportunity to just release like an Afrobeat extended cut. And to be fair, I read something that said that the first director's cut of the film was four hours long. Mm. And so... To be, I'm I'm be 100 percent with you. I will sit through a four hours long director cut, but beyond all that, I'm here for like a box set. Like you're going to have to give yeah, me break that thing up. Yeah, and I'm going to have to actually own. I'm not a big person to own like physical also, media, mm-hmm. but I want to own a Black Panther box set. Yeah. yeah, and there needs to be some type of kente cloth. There needs to yes. be like when I open the box, there needs to be like sounds and I want to be transported Smells. back to like, do you remember the time? All that. Like yeah. all of it. And so that's what needs to happen. I also don't think the film like warranted or needed or made sense with a whole bunch of Afrobeat. I feel like it had no. enough. Yeah, it did. Yeah. Because I feel like there's also elements of like Oakland, which was like Eric's yes. upbringing. Yes. Yes. Like I think people, I don't know. I just think people, as we do with things, I just think they had expectations. Yeah. And I think, because of those expectations, yeah. then you were disappointed. I think if you had just let the thing be what the thing was, and it would have been what it was. You would make you would understand how much I think because I'm right. The uh, the <laughs> soundtrack that turned me on. Yes. <laughs> Virgos. Also, there's the official score, which is separate. Like, which brings me back to. If y'all can be mad about a lack of Afro B, why can't I be mad about a lack of lesbianism? Say that. Say that. Okay? Say that. All right? I just want to see Okoye kiss a girl. Yes. Me. Me, the girl. I'll be the Dora Milaje on that she kisses. Yes. Fully yes. and proudly. In I the hear mouth. there's a, um, In the mouth. A, 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 a petition going around actually asking for a Wakanda series. I would love to explore all of this in a really well done mm-hmm. like Wakandan mm-hmm. series. Mm-hmm. Um, and by well done, I mean it needs to be well done. And at this point, I feel like it should be financed by Netflix. But Netflix, wait, didn't, isn't Anna? She got signed to Netflix, right? Who? Who's Anna? Oh, shit. Let's end this episode. I'm making people up again. <laughs> oh, honey. Issa Rae? I don't know. Who the fuck is Who's Anna? Anna? Ask me again when I know. Anna okay. got signed to Netflix? <laughs> Yo, congratulations, Anna. Shout out to Anna. Who got signed to Netflix. Anna don't even have a last name because it's how prolific she is. Yes. Go off, Anna. That's the ANA. ANA. <laughs> he has no idea who he's talking about right now. You don't. <laughs> and on that note, hit us on the social. <laughs> we are three black fems. The number three black F E M M E S. On the Twitters, on the Instagrams, on the Facebooks. Um, <laughs> uh, our website is www.3blackfems.com. We have three black fems gear. Yeah, we do. It's available at the website for our production company, which is spacesproductions.com. So Buy our gear. Cash at Daryl. <laughs> I'm going to start doing ASMR on the mic so we have to cut. (laughs) I'm making up people shit. Thanks for listening. (laughs) Bye. 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 Bye.